In our previous video where we took a look at solving systems of differential equations using eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we didn't actually cover the whole story because there's a couple cases that I left out. One of those cases that I left out is what do we do if we have a repeated eigenvalue? That's going to be the question we're going to attempt to answer in this video. What do we do with repeated eigenvalues? And the problem really comes down to the fact that when we're finding our two uh, solutions that we have our constant one times the first solution and constant two times the second solution we need to have linearly independent solutions in fact we've seen this problem before um, before when we solve problems like y double prime minus 4y prime plus 4y equals zero differential equations in one variable. We said that was d squared minus 4d plus 4 equals 0, and then we factored that to d minus 2 squared equals 0, and then we had our repeated root of d equals 2. And so our first solution in that case was c1 times e to the 2t plus we couldn't have another e to the 2t because that would not be linearly independent. And so what we found out is we had to multiply by a t e to the 2t to get a linearly independent second solution. And that was how we solved that problem. We're going to do a similar thing with our eigenvalues. Just need to tweak it a little bit to make it work uh, for the matrices and matrix notation and whatnot. So here's what we're going to do to solve the repeated eigenvalue problem. If lambda is a repeated, and specifically in this case we're talking about a double root eigenvalue, and v, I'll try and make that a bold v as a vector, is an eigenvector, is the eigenvector, we will define a new vector p. I'll try and make it a bold p because usually our vectors are bold letters. As we'll use this notation of a minus lambda times the identity matrix, which basically is what we get when we plug that lambda in to that determinant that we worked with before times the p vector equals our eigenvector. And the reason we do that is because then the solution is given by x equals c1 times the vector e to the lambda t, that's the first root, just like we always did before, plus c2 times, and then in brackets, we're going to take the eigenvector times t e to the lambda t, and then we're going to add that p vector we found e to the lambda t as well. And that's how we get the linear independence that we need for our solutions. This will probably make more sense with an example. So let's do two examples together, and then I'll let you try some on the assignment. So B, examples. Let's do x prime equals negative 4x minus y, and y prime equals x minus 2y. Okay. If I were to put this in matrix form, we get that x prime is equal to the coefficients of negative 4, negative 1, 1, negative 2, times our x that we're looking for. 
We know the eigenvalue vector method works great to solve, so we'll take the determinant of negative 4 minus lambda, negative 1, 1, and negative 2 minus lambda. That would be negative 4 minus lambda times negative 2 minus lambda minus negative 1, which becomes a positive 1. We want that to equal 0. And if I multiply this out, we get 8 minus or plus 4 lambda plus 2 lambda plus lambda squared plus 1 equals 0 or lambda squared plus 6 lambda plus 9 equals 0 lambda plus 3 squared equals 0 and lambda is as expected a double root at negative 3. So what we can find is the eigenvector at negative 3. If lambda equals negative 3, plugging that into the lambdas, we get negative 4 minus a negative 3 is negative 1, negative 1, and 1, negative 2 minus negative 3 is 1, times our eigenvector AB, which gives us negative A minus B equals 0, and A plus B equals 0. Solving for one of the equations, we get a equals negative b. So if I let b equal 1, a would be negative 1. So my eigenvector is negative 1, 1. Okay, that's all what we did before. Now we're going to look for our p vector. The way we find our p-vector is we take that same exact matrix that we worked with, the negative 1, negative 1, 1, 1, and we're going to multiply it by another vector. Um, I just need two different letters. Maybe I'll call them mn. That's my p-matrix or vector that I'm looking for. I'm going to set that equal to not 0, but equal to the eigenvector that I just found, negative 1, 1. And when I do that, we get negative m minus n equals negative 1, and m plus n equals 1. And just like before, when we made our vector by picking a value, we're going to do that again here. I'm just going to pick the second one, and we'll subtract m, so n is equal to 1 minus m. Oops. 1 minus n. Sorry. And I can pick any value for n, so I'm going to let n equal 0. I could pick 1 or any number I want that's really nice. And this is going to give me my p vector. P is MN, so M is 1 minus 0, which is 1, and N is 0, and that then is my P vector. So now, when I get to my final answer, X is equal to C1 times my eigenvector of negative 1, 1, times E to the negative 3T. That's just like it was before. Plus, for our C2 to get that linear independence, what we do is we put that in a set of brackets. We take the eigenvector, negative 1, 1, times t e to the negative 3t. That gives us our linear independence. But we need to add p, which is 1, 0, times e to the negative 3t. And that becomes my solution to the system of equations with the double repeated root. Let's try a second example so we can see that process work through again. Again, first we find the eigenvalue and vector like always, and then we go after this new vector p by setting it equal to the eigenvector. Let's try this one. 
Let's do x prime equals x minus 3y. y prime equals 3x plus 7y. Change that to vector form. That's going to be our solutions derivative times the coefficients 1, negative 3, 3, 7 times the x vector that we're looking for. Just like we did in our previous video then, using the eigenvalue method, we're going to have the determinant of 1 minus lambda, negative 3, 3, and 7 minus lambda, which is 1 minus lambda times 7 minus lambda minus a negative 9, which makes it plus 9. Multiplying out, we get 7 minus lambda minus 7 lambda plus lambda squared plus 9, and we want this to equal 0. So lambda squared minus 8 lambda plus 16 equals 0. Gives us lambda minus 4 squared equals 0. And as expected, we've got a double root at lambda equals 4. First, we find the eigenvector, like always. If lambda equals 4, we end up with plugging 4 into those lambdas. 1 minus 4 is negative 3, negative 3, 3, and 7 minus 4 is 3, times our AB gives us negative 3a minus 3b equals 0, or 3a plus 3b equals 0. Uh, I'm just going to grab the positive one. 3a equals negative 3b, divide by 3, and a equals negative b. Which makes me think, let's let b equal 1. That's going to give me a is negative b, or negative 1. B is 1, and we've got our eigenvector. Now we go back and find our P by taking that same matrix of negative 3, negative 3, 3, 3, multiplying by our P matrix, which I'll just fill with MN, and we want that to equal the eigenvector that we just found of negative 1, 1. Well, that'll give me negative 3m minus 3n equals negative 1, or 3m plus 3n equals 1. One thing I notice as I look at this is I can't really solve for m and n without getting fractions. And that's okay. If you want to work with the fractions, that's fine. I personally would prefer to avoid the fractions. What would be nice is if these numbers at the end were divisible by 3, then I wouldn't have fractions. Well, I can go back and fix that because those 1s came from my eigenvector. Well, I said let b equal 1. Why don't we let b equal 3 instead. If b were equal to 3, a would be negative 3. And so now I'm equal to actually negative 3, 3, which if I change my equals on here, now I've got negative 3, 3, which means there's now going to be no fractions which is kind of nice. So same process, keep going. Uh, let's solve for m. So we'll say 3m is 3 minus 3n. Divide by 3, m is equal to 1 minus n. And now there's no fractions, which is really nice. I could have kept the fractions. This just avoids the fractions. I can pick n to equal anything I want. Uh, 0 and 1 are really common values. Let's let n equal 1 this time. And that's going to give me my p value where n is 1 and m is 1 minus 1, which is 0. So now I've got my p and we're ready to express the final answer to this system of equations. 
our x vector is equal to c1 times my eigenvector, which we now have as negative 3, 3, times e to the 4t. Plus, in parentheses, we've got our, oops, plus c2 times the parentheses. Don't forget the constant. The eigenvector of negative 3, 3 e to the 4t times t to make it linearly independent. We just need to now add the p, which is the 0, 1, times e to the 4t. And now we've got our solution to the system of differential equations. Very similar to what we did in the last video, just fixing one problem that we kind of ignored in the last video of that double root. The only difference is now we're finding that P to help us create a linearly independent second solution. Your turn to practice now, so practice some of these in the book. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help.